Home. Chapter 18. A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction Written and Narrated by Mira Rose. Artwork provided by XAA. You can find a link to the artist's Tumblr in the description box. If you haven't already, make sure to listen to the other 17 parts of this story. There is a link to them in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit the bell to stay up to date on the latest parts of your favorite fanfiction, and leave a comment and support to help the YouTube algorithm. Bonus points if you like the video as well. If you're still listening to this intro, comment recording booth, because it is pretty close to 90 degrees in here and I am dying. Now then, chapter 18. Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir. Cat trotted down the boulevard, wondering what Ladybug wanted to talk about. She wasn't going to ask him out, right? There was no way, as much as he wanted to entertain the idea. Sure, he liked Marinette, but Ladybug would always be his first love and crutch. He wasn't sure if he'd ever be able to say no to her if she wanted to start dating. <laughs> Dream on. As easy as it was to daydream of Ladybug asking him out, she probably wanted to talk about the latest Akuma fight or something. Hello, my lady, he sang, opening the cafe door with a jingle and sliding into a seat across from her. It was before the cafe opened, so there were plenty of seats and no wandering ears. Perks of saving the owner had its place in time that's for sure. Then again, it was rare for Ladybug to take up such an offer. You look chipper. Anything happen with that girl of yours? Ladybug looked glum as she said it, despite her raised chin. Was she jealous? Nah. So what's up? What is the catbug team talking about today? He asked his palms on the table. Cat, your actions at the last Akuma fight, Ladybug said, her eyes lost in recollection. Yeah, what about it? Pretty dope, right? They give me pause as to whether or not you should keep your miraculous. She held his gaze as she said it, somehow worse than looking away. No. She wasn't serious. This was a joke, right? Right? Just a bad joke. Yeah. My lady, I think you need to leave the humor to me. Cat was barely able to keep the quiver out of his voice. Regardless of how he tried to comfort himself, he knew Ladybug was serious. I'm sorry, Cat, but you can't put one person above the other. We could have finished that fight a lot sooner if you hadn't lost your marbles over that marinette girl. Cat felt something dark and bitter twisting in his stomach. No. No, she wasn't blaming him for this. No. Nuh-uh. As opposed to you and that aggressed boy? She looked as shocked as he felt when the words came out. Excuse me? He couldn't pin her tone. Instead, he huffed and stood up. I think we're done here. What? No, Cat, we aren't. Come back here. Fighting the urge to ball his fists, Cat turned around for one last glance, a smirk painted on his face. You judge based on what? One bad day, one misstep, as if you haven't taken strides for certain individuals. He clicked his tongue, trying to calm down. We're a team, Ladybug. Me and you. I'd rather you talk to me, help me change and improve instead of getting ahead in your own mind. And yet here you are, ready to storm out. Tension sparked as they made eye contact. Sighing, Cat plopped back in the chair. 
Don't do this to me, LB. Bad luck or not, I'm a great partner. As much as I don't want to start over with someone new, I'm going to need the ring back. Cat Noir had never heard words so cruel. Ladybug, he began. There will always be another Marinette Dupang Chang for you, won't there? He scoffed, looking at her with his mouth open. This isn't you. Cat gave her a once-over, begging the universe to show him she was a fake. You've abused your ring, Cat. What? Wasn't this about him taking extra measures to protect Marinette? If you wanted to get close to this Marinette girl, why not do it without the mask? You're supposed to protect Paris, not take advantage of anonymity. Her words were sharp, leaving his heart shredded, but what hurt most is the accuracy. She was right. He wasn't supposed to use the miraculous like this, but... But... Cat hung his head, worried over if he sighed it would turn to tears. We had a good run, he admitted, unsure of how much time passed. We did. Her voice was soft, too soft. She didn't want to do this. He'd ruined it. I'd like to say goodbye to her, like this. I'll let her know. All this time I wanted to know who you were. I didn't think you'd learn first. The guilt was written across Ladybug's face as she scratched behind her earlobe. I'll always love you, Cat. Remember that. Just don't love the next guy as much as me, all right? He gave a wink, but it lacked his usual charm. Deaf to her sorry laugh, Cat mumbled to himself. Sliding off his silver ring, Adrian snuck a glance at Ladybug to see her reaction, but her eyes were closed. How fitting. Even at the end of it all, she didn't want to know who he was. There'd be no way for her to find him after this. Oh, what a crushing and lonely thought. He stood up and rounded the corner, placing a hand on the tabletop for support as he leaned in. I'll always love you, Ladybug, he whispered, pressing a kiss to her forehead. Adrian felt a shiver pass through her before pulling away. Glancing up, he saw Plague stare at him from across the table. You too, Plague. We had a good run. He couldn't bear to stay and hear the Kwame's response. A dramatic contradiction to the events inside, Adrian stepped outside to a sunlit street. The pavement warmed and flowers blooming. Not how he pictured his last day as a superhero, but you never know. Maybe Ladybug would seek him, Adrian, out with another miraculous someday down the line. He had to have hope, after all because the emotions hiding behind his heart were too insufferable to unbox. And so, just as suddenly as Adrian's superhero adventure began, it ended. Thank you so much for listening. If you're here at this end screen, comment not the ending. I'll catch you in chapter 19.